Hello, my name is Naisha Arrington, and this is Cook With Us with Well and Good. This recipe is so easy. It's like one of those lazy go-to recipes. It's a sheet pan beet and squash hash. Before you're gonna go to the farmer's market or go grocery shopping, check out your fridge, see what extra vegetables you have laying around, chop them up, toss them with some delicious good oil, and roast them. It's really as easy as that. For this veggie hash, I have some extra sprouted lentils, which are one of my favorite ingredients. Um, I make them by soaking lentils for about two days. Um, you basically soak them overnight and then pour off the water and, and allow them to sprout in something simple like a mason jar. You really just want to lay it flat, put the lid on and allow them to sort of sprout. I love eating food that is electric and has life in them. I like to start with whatever is like the darkest colored um, or most difficult to prep. And today that's gonna be our beet. Um, the beet's pretty hard. We're going to actually cook the beet in with the same vegetables at the same time as opposed to pre-roasting our beet. But the key to that is dicing the beet small so that it roasts and steams at the same time. And you'll see um, how we achieve that in just a few moments. So uh, a few, steps, make sure that we cover our hands. The beet has a lot of dye in it. Uh, I like to use a cutting board that I don't love as much as this one and something that I can remove and take away very easily. And also be careful of your clothes. You wanna wear a protective apron, maybe some goggles, it's your world. What we want to do is create a flat, even work surface. So how I achieve that is I cut the tops and the bottoms of the beets off. Okay, these beet stems are really delicious and they offer a ton of texture and flavor. Um, I actually keep them and I roast them and toss that in with the hash as well. I don't want the skin on them necessarily uh, from the beginning because it'll be too hard for me to get it off because we're dicing these beets. So I really just want to cut some of the skin off. And again, you can totally use a peeler, no problem. So I just like to slice this into about half inch slices. And we call this cut a batonnet, which is essentially the French fry cut. So this is the same cut that you would use if you're making French fries. About a half an inch thickness, looks like that. And then I'm just gonna create stacks. And I use this same application for everything that I cut into this shape, right? It's about a three step process, right? So we're slicing, we have a half an inch thickness. Then I turn the beat sort of parallel and I cut the same half inch slices the opposite way. And then I simply turn them and we will achieve some beautiful cubes just like that. Now we've eliminated a large work surface so in turn, these beets are gonna cook very quickly. I'll do the same with my delicata squash. But first, I want to transfer my beets to my sheet pan. We're already starting to cook here. Squash gets cut in half first because you wanna create a nice even work surface. It'd be too hard to kind of go in and cut this squash evenly because we have a, a wider side and we have a narrower side. So let's like even things out by maybe starting with the narrower side, right? So we get nice symmetrical pieces. We want symmetrical pieces so that everything cooks at the same time. So now we have our beets and our squash. Uh, what we need to do first is cook both of these vegetables, right? So what I'm going to do, I love coconut oil for cooking. It's so good for the body. So I add two tablespoons of coconut oil, um, good amount of salt, and that coconut oil is going to impart a ton of flavor. Caraway I love. So I'm gonna add just a touch of caraway, some fresh ginger. So basically about a half inch uh, chunk of ginger and I just kind of cut around the outside of the ginger. Just peeling away some of the skin. Smells fantastic. Because this is our lazy dish, 
right? Like we're just gonna keep that lazy theme going. And instead of going in with a knife and peeling and chopping and doing all the things with the ginger, just use a microplane. It just makes your life a lot easier and you can get things done lickety split. So tons of ginger in there. I love a lot of ginger. Again, it's one of those anti-inflammatory things that is really good for the body. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this pan. And really what that's gonna do is allow everything to just stay lubricated and moisturized so that nothing is drying out. We're, we're removing water and concentrating flavor as we're roasting these vegetables. So we want to give the vegetables this kind of fighting chance. So we're adding some water in on the front end. So as it almost dehydrates, they're staying, they're not getting too dry. So I'm gonna just put this in the oven. After we've roasted our beets and our coconut oil or salt or aromatics, garlic, ginger, now I add the sort of fresher ingredients because now our uh, playing field's even and we don't have to cook too much the tomatoes and the, and the lentils, right? The sprouted lentils are already cooked and the sprouting of them actually takes a ton of the cooking time off when you're cooking with lentils. These lentils took maybe eight minutes to cook, if that. So now I just add whole fresh tomatoes. The heirloom tomatoes have very thin skin, so you don't really want to cut them. Otherwise, they just kind of fall apart. So it's a two-step sheet pan situation. We've roasted our squash, we've roasted our beets. I add my lentils. One step that's really important, I'd have to say that I would suggest people invest in, especially if you're gonna do a lot of sheet pan cooking, are these amazing tools called silpats, and you can get them anywhere, but it's essentially a nonstick um, silicone baking surface, and it just helps with cleanup so much. They're very wipeable. You can use them over and over and over. I've probably had this one for years and years, but it just makes everything really happy. I have the beet stems here that are cooked, uh, that I saved from another time when I roasted beets. I actually just kept the stems, so I'm gonna add those in as well. I love to layer my flavor, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper on this. Just to sort of bring everything together. And this step, we're just going to roast everything, right? We're gonna add just a little bit of fresh herbs. Just kind of wake everything up. Most of my water has been evaporated, so I just want to add a touch, a touch more just to keep everything happy and moisturized, lubricated. Like this looks pretty delicious already, just to eat, like all the colors look amazing. Um, so I'm just gonna roast this for about eight minutes. Essentially, we just wanna warm everything up together. Oh my gosh, the coconut oil smells so fantastic on this. So the cilantro kind of wilts down and gets like crispy. And I love it because cooked cilantro has a completely different flavor profile than um, fresh cilantro. So this is hot and it has some really beautiful texture. With hashes, I think it's important when you're choosing your vegetables, choose your vegetables that have different um, flavor profiles and different textures, you know? You wanna use aromatics like garlic, like onions, um, you know, ginger, shallots are great. And then the freshness from the tomatoes at the end make this really awesome. So I'm just gonna finish it with a tiny bit more salt. Again, layering the salt. It's not about adding all the salt in the beginning or all the salt at the end. You wanna just add small doses as you go and as you're cooking to really develop and layer the flavor. You could take this and you could, you know, serve it with some steamed rice. You could eat it this, just like this. You could make it part of another dish. This particular recipe is a beautiful, delicate balance of late summer going into fall. So you have these like vibrant, beautiful, fresh tomatoes, as well as these lentils that will be so filling and the sweetness from the beets and the squash. 
So this veggie sheet pan hash is one of my favorite recipes. It has an amazing balance between sweetness and amazing texture. And I love the lentils having this sort of heartiness in the dish. Um, you saw that it took me no more than maybe 20 minutes. I mean, super, super simple, chopping up a bunch of vegetables, roasting them, and adding tons of freshness at the end, ultimately, is really so easy. Thanks for watching. The recipe is in the description below, and be sure to subscribe to Well and Good.